Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start pulling these guys out of here. I'm out here in my core ice shack today and we're doing a little bit of work. We're gonna do some battery work today. We're gonna take out the lead acid batteries that are in here. We're gonna swap them out for some life PO4 power. Let me show you what we're working with. I cannot wait. This is gonna be a good video. Hopefully it helps all of you out that are looking to swap from a lead acid system to a lithium system and maybe give you some ideas. We're also gonna be putting an inverter in, uh, which will allow us to be able to use the 110, 120 volt power, so your normal outlets uh, off of your batteries if you have enough storage power, which we are gonna be doing today. Link everything that I'm using in terms of parts, components, batteries, and all of that to make it easy for you if you wanna use the same things. There's a few different ways to do it. This is just the way that I'm gonna be doing it. I'm really focused on uh, getting more uh, power out of the system to being able to use the inverter so that way I can use the microwave or I can charge some of my batteries and things that need that outlet power uh, while I'm not connected to shore power or generator. And of course, the benefit of cutting weight. So let's show you what we're dealing with here and let's jump in. All right, so in the front closet of this Cora Shack is uh, what you would maybe consider a closet or a bathroom. I will have a uh, toilet solution there that you'll see in some of the other videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. But this guy right here, this is one of four batteries I'm gonna be putting in here. That's right, I will have 400 amp hours of Life PO4 battery. Amped Outdoors is my favorite Life PO4 battery. In fact, I reached out to them to see, is there any way that we could do a deal where I can get you guys a promo code to save some money if you wanna do a similar setup or get any of their ice fishing batteries or even for your boat if you want to. So check in the description down below. Maybe I'll throw it on the screen here. Um, I did get them to give you guys a discount code uh, to be able to use to save some money so make sure that if you're interested in life po4 batteries you check out amped outdoors they have some of the highest quality batteries out there uh, while being incredibly budget friendly which which i'm very excited about uh it's a high quality product they stand behind it so what we can see here this is a deep cycle battery 100 amp hour uh, replaces a group 27 and you can see that little logo up there that's a little Bluetooth logo that's right there's a phone app that you can use to monitor uh, how this thing is doing in terms of charging discharging where it's at percentage wise but I'm gonna have four of these 100 amp hour batteries in these two cubbies so right now let me show you the setup that we've got here so this is just an outlet then we've got a couple 12 volt things here a 12 volt jack and then we've got a USB jack this here is our uh, breaker panel, so we'll probably have to take this off to do a little bit of wiring uh, when we get the inverter and the chargers and everything wired up. But right next to it, there's two little cubbies here. If you open them up, what you're gonna see is the same thing in both of them, which are these lovely white boxes that we are getting rid of. Inside of these, I have not opened them yet. Uh, we'll do it together here and uh, this will be a fun process. I have not opened these up so I don't know what battery exactly is in these but these are sealed lead acid batteries. You can see they've got a vent on the back here uh, to get that fresh air, the venting, uh, the off gassing that some of these batteries do outside. There's two vent holes. The one down here does the same thing, direct vented outside and then we've got the wires coming out of it. So I'm gonna show you guys uh, what exactly this looks like, but essentially we're taking four of these, replacing those two sealed lead acid batteries, of which I know because Core Ice told me these are 100 amp hour batteries. So two 100 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries, you typically only get 50% use out of them. Um, so that's 100 amp hours total of power that you get here. We're putting, I'll put on the screen here, how much each of these weigh. Uh, so you can kind of see what is my battery weight here with these boxes and everything. And then what is my battery weight when I have four uh, 100 amp hour batteries in there too. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start pulling these guys out of here. Okay, so it looks like what we gotta do is take this Velcro strap off of here. So once you take the strap off, it looks like you can just take this off and then pop the lid up. There it is. Get the battery. Really, actually, pretty simple. So we need a wrench to get these off. Pull these cords off. All right. Now our battery can come out. <laughs> <laughs> 
There we go. So this is the battery we're dealing with here. 100 amp hour interstate. Figure out how I'm gonna fit four of these in here. What it looks like I can probably do is set them on their sides like this. Or I wonder if I can stack two of these batteries up and down like that. I'll put some Velcro in between them so that way they don't slide around. And then I can still utilize the strap to go over it. I think that's a really good idea. That's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this back out of here so I have a little bit of space to work. Get the bottom one out of here. So now we can see we've got the top battery out, we got the bottom battery out. Before I go and put all of our Life PO4 batteries in here, I wanna show you a couple things and tell you what we gotta do next. There's wires up here for the batteries. We'll have to run a couple extra wires so that way we can use two batteries hooked up to these. Same down here. Both the wires for the bottom battery and the bo top battery compartments go down to the floor, there's a little chase back here. I don't know how easily you can see it, probably not because of the lighting, but it goes down along the floor into here. Wires are in here. They come up to the battery shut, shut off switch. And then there's also a wire that keeps going up to the converter box. This converter box has 12 volt converter in it. So essentially what can happen is if your batteries were dead or you were hooked up to shore power, essentially the power coming in, which is that power port right there that goes outside, that white cord, which goes into that chase down in the bottom as well, that feeds into this panel and then the converter will power all of our 12 volt accessories as well as feed power back through the wire into the batteries. The problem that we have with that is we're looking to use our own inverter hooked up to the batteries so that way we don't need a generator or shore power outside. We can just use our 400 amp hours of batteries, invert it to be able to run all the outlets in here if we want to, to charge up all my electronics, potentially use the microwave, so on and so forth. So in order to prevent this system from thinking it's powered from outside, trying to charge the battery, there's a switch. Fortunately, the way that they wired it up, they actually put a switch in. So what you can see here is the power converter is the top switch. So if we shut it off, essentially it is no longer converting 110 or 120 volt power into 12 volt power. And that also means it's not charging the battery. So we'll just leave that off unless we're sitting on shore power and the inverter's not hooked up. I hope that makes sense. As we keep going, I think it'll make even more sense. But what we need to do is this. We're gonna get the batteries in here. We're gonna have the inverter. Somehow we need the inverter to power the house. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this wire, take it off of the plug on the outside. We're gonna wire up a male end on the house power, on the shore power cord. I'm gonna hook a female end up to the shore power port that's coming in. So we'll have a female end there. This will essentially turn into an extension cord. So it'll have a male end on the end of it. That way, this is an extension cord. I can plug into there if I want shore power, or I can plug into the inverter if I wanna power the house off of the inverter that's inside. And that should be all we need to do. So let's go outside and check that out. All right, so here's the port outside. We've got screws here we're gonna take out. All right, so I already took the screws out that you can see around the outside. Now we're gonna pull this out. And then what you can see is this little clipping system. So we gotta unscrew the back, push that in. And now this twists to allow us to pull it back. There we go. Get in there. We gotta get that end piece in there. And now what you can see are screws. Those are gonna release the wires that are on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew those. 
just enough to be able to pull the wires out just like on any other outlet or anything where you've got it pinched down on the wire it's the exact same thing that's happening here and just like that the back of it is off you can see where the ports where the things go here you've got a white a green and a black which matches the colors of the wires that we have here white green and black and so this we're gonna put inside we're gonna put a male end on these wires on the inside we're gonna put a female end here so that way we can plug it in here or we can plug it into our own power inverter inside all right so this is how we're doing this we've got the wire that we disconnected from the port out there I grabbed one of these plugs from an arts so we put a male end on the end of this this is the house power this is the shore power plug that was going outside. I just disconnected the end of it uh, that you saw earlier. This will slide over the top. You can see it just the wires go directly into the back of it there. And then this will slide right over it. I'll tie that down. And then I'm gonna get a wire for outside coming in that this can plug into so we can still use shore power or this can plug right into an inverter inside. And we're good to go, let's keep going. All right, so as you can see, this is the shore power plug for outside. I wired up some wire coming out of the back of it. This will go back in outside. I'm gonna go screw this in right now with the screws that I have. And then this will come inside. A clip will go over the back of it. And then we've got our wires here. And then that's gonna terminate into this guy, which is a female outlet connection. And then we'll be able to plug everything in directly. All right, so here it is. The shroud's back on. The port outside is hooked up. We've got our little short yellow cord here, or the wire, hooked up to our female plug end. And we've got the white wire, which is our house power, hooked up to this guy right here. So ideally now, we should just be able to plug this in and be back on shore power. Let's try it out. Boom. You could probably hear the microwave just started up. Awesome, that's great news. And then this can just go right out of the way there. It's out of the way and we're on shore power. But here's the great part. Now we're gonna put our two batteries here, right? We're gonna put our two batteries up here. We're gonna have them wired up. And then we're gonna have an inverter as well, which I'm hopefully gonna be able to fit down here in this cabinet um, as well, otherwise we'll figure it out. But then what I can do is just unplug this guy and plug it right into the inverter. I've got the power converter turned off so it won't back feed into the batteries. Start getting the batteries. Well, everything's starting up that was plugged into power so it's definitely working. Start getting the batteries in here, getting things wired up and that's the next step. All right, so after a little bit of work, here we are. So we've got one 100 amp hour battery, two, three, and four. So a total of 400 amp hours of life PO4 battery. This thing is gonna be awesome. So the way that I wired it up, let's start on the bottom here. So, so I already talked about the short power cord that's coming in there. I plugged it three way in and what you're gonna see here is we've got the house power down there. So when I'm plugged into shore power, it's gonna power the house from either shore power or generator. And then here, what I've got is an inverter. So this other wire that you see here is a cord called inverter so this cord goes up to the inverter that we're going to talk about in a second but what this does is in case i was just running off of 12 volt what i would do is i was just disconnect the house plug here and plug it into the end of this extension cord which would then allow the house to act as if it were on shore power but it's really running off of the inverter so that's there uh, in terms of the batteries that i've got two 100 amp hours down here two up there the way that they're wired is we have uh, the negatives hooked up here with this wire positives hooked up together here with this wire and then I've got a negative and a positive that are going into battery number one on my battery power cutoff switch and I've got it still running from both because that's the way that we want to do it um, and then I've got a positive and a negative that are running up connected to these batteries up here. So I've got them hooked up together here, and then I've got them hooked up to these batteries, of which these batteries I also have a positive to positive, a negative to negative, and then of course the uh, cords for the running to the battery cutoff switch. 
I've got a positive and negative for that. And then I've got a positive and negative uh, to go to the inverter and a positive and negative to go to the charger. So that's the way that the batteries are hooked up. 400 amp hours of life peel for battery. This thing is epic. Uh, in the back corner here, I'll get my light for you here. In the back corner up top, what you can see, this is a 20 amp charger. So 12 volt, 20 amp. Uh, life PO4 charger. So this is what is plugged into the three-way down below. So on shore power in 20 hours from dead, it'll charge these 400 amp hours of batteries if they're fully dead, either on shore power or generator. And then what you can see here is we've got an inverter power switch and then we've got a big inverter here. I just got it up there. I got it to fit in there and I got it nice and snug up there. So I'm not going to pull it out. But what I'll do is I'll put some images here on the screen so you can see which one I got but the way we got it is pretty straightforward. So we've got outlets in the back side here. That's that extension cord that's going down uh, to plug into the house power. And so we're good there. And then on this side of it that you can't see really too well back here because it's a tight fit, but we've got the positive and negative that are coming off and running to these batteries. So these batteries are all hooked up together. So that way they're gonna balance each other out. Um, and then over here on the electrical panel, what we've got is you'll see that top switch there, the 15 amp power center, power converter. We've got that turned off. What that means is I do not want this power converter actually charging these batteries uh, because what's gonna happen then is if I'm on 12 volt and I'm running the inverter, so that it thinks that it has AC power is it'll try to pump juice back into these batteries uh, and I don't want that. So I've got that shut off and so that's the simple workaround for that. It was actually a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Um, I was thinking I was gonna re need to redo some wiring. So that's how I've got it set up. What's wonderful about this setup is nothing's permanent. I could go ahead and take both of these batteries out, take both of those batteries out, throw the lead acids back in, uh, take the wiring I did off of that external plug out there, put the other wire back on it, and you would never know that I did any of this. And that's what my plan is uh, at the end of the season. Uh, take these back out and have it uh, ready to go like nothing ever happened here. So with this inverter, it's a 3000 watt inverter. I believe it's a 6000 watt peak. This thing's gonna be able to run the microwave. It's gonna be able to run any outlets. It's gonna be able to run anything that I got running at it, uh, which I'm really excited about in case I need to you know, heat something up in the microwave really quick. Or if I wanna run some powerful things off of the outlets, I can, of course, it's gonna eat up the battery. But that's what we're working with here. 400 amp hours of life PO4 conversion, of course. There probably is a lot of different ways to wire these to make them look a lot neater and nicer. Uh, feel free to drop down in the comments if you think there's anything here that I need to improve, but I'm pretty happy with the way that it worked out. And these things are freaking rock solid. They're strapped in. They're not going anywhere. They're mounted to the floor, strapped all the way around and held down by that strap. Uh, and then of course, each of them are behind a door that latches shut too. So I'm really excited about it. I'll let you know, of course, if I have any issues. I'm hoping to do a time test here a little bit later this season where I have these things fully charged and I'm using everything in the house, uh, both with and without the inverter, just to see how long it lasts. But one other thing that I got that I wanna show you is this guy right here. So this is an inverter, 300 watt. It's got two outlets, a couple USBs on it. It's got a power switch on the back and it's got a cigarette plug. So the nice thing is if I need to just charge my laptop battery or charge something real quick and I don't wanna plug the bigger inverter in uh, to use up a ton of power, I can plug this in uh, to the cigarette outlets here for 12 volt and that way I can stay on 12 volt power. These things are not too expensive. I'll link to this one or the closest thing that I can find of it on Amazon. They're not too expensive and they're nice, but they're not pure sine wave either. So if you want that really efficient, uh, really clean energy, this is not gonna be the best thing for you, but if it's just something you need a little bit of juice for, for a for short period of time, this could be a good option. So I got one of these and what I'm gonna do is I'll just put it right here in this cabinet, right underneath the other inverter, that way, I can make a decision each time I go to grab the inverter. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. And then I've got a bunch of other videos on the channel here about this house and all the mods that I'm doing. Feel free to check those out here on the screen. Until next time, take it easy.